Welcome back to EasyFM tutorial. We are uh, at part 6 now. And today we are going to take a look at computer assists. Uh, now, in all of the previous parts, we were controlling uh, the control surfaces directly. In other words, if you pull back on the stick, the elevator goes up and the nose goes up as well. So, in this part, we're going to do something else. Now, as most of you probably know, uh, modern fighter jets uh, use something known as fly-by-wire. Now, what that means is when you pull back on the stick, uh, the, this input will be read by a computer and before it will be applied to control surface, uh, several assists will be mixed into this signal to make the, make the jet easier to control. Now, the reason for this is because uh, modern fighter jets are built to be uh, aerodynamically unstable. Uh, let me show you what this means. Now, as you can see here, well, hold on a second, I've done some tweaks to our example model. Most important of which is that pitch stability is negative. What that it means is when I pull nose up, the aircraft will not try to stabilize it, but uh, it will continue this movement and if not corrected, the jet will spin out of control and crash. Now, obviously, uh, this is practically impossible to fly manually. So, let's get our friend computer to help us. Okay. To do that, go to assist. And as you can see, we have several, several options here. Uh, now, Let's go through them. Uh, the first option is alpha limiter. What this does is uh, limit the maximum and minimum AOA. So uh, we won't stall the aircraft. Now, if we take a look at our lift curve, as you can see, the stall occurs at, let's say, 12.5. So this is going to be our max alpha. Doesn't make any sense to go higher than that because as you can see, the amount of lift actually goes down after that. Uh, minimum alpha will be uh, same thing except in opposite direction. Let's also put 20.5 in there. And uh, sensitivity will be how fast uh, the limiter will engage when you exceed this limit. So if we put, let's say, 1 in here, and the, you will get a sort of uh, 1 degree of soft transition uh, that uh, means that as you are exceeding 20 and approaching 13 uh, the you will have less authority with your stick and uh, the computer will push harder against it and at 13.5 uh, it will be basically hard limit and you can't go higher than that so you can reduce this to give yourself, let's say, two degrees of margin. And pitch rate influence will uh, mix your current pitch rate into that to prevent oscillations. Uh, usually 0 0.1 is a good number that will stop oscillations, but uh, keep the limiter responsive. And uh, let's see what it does now. And as you can see, even though I'm 
pushing all the way back on the stick. The airplane doesn't stall and uh, remains flying. Now, this by itself doesn't um, make for a particularly comfortable ride on our aerodynamically unstable jet because even though it prevents it from falling out of the sky, it still wants to go up and down and you need to actively fight it. Uh, for that, uh, we have another function, stability augmentation. I have already uh, experimented with it a bit and found that at uh, 0 0.05 is a nice compromise between responsivity and stability. By the way, this uh, works very similar to uh, the natural damping. Uh, but, uh, but as you can see, I have uh, tweaked this jet to have a very low amount of damping by itself. So the computer assist needs to count, needs to enhance it. So let's see how it flies now with damping on. Now, as you can see, it's much more stable and it generally holds the, holds the angle at which you put it. And if I try to turn off the engine and try to stall it, the computer will prevent that. Uh, another option is uh, slip limiter, which is same as alpha limiter. The options are the same, except there's only one uh, number called max slip. Mm, this also doubles as uh, minimal slip in other direction. One less number to worry about. Now, Let's continue. Another thing is auto trim. Now, um, let me explain what this does. Even though, even though our our stability augmentation does eat up uh, small oscillations, there's always sort of, as you can see, overall trend to move up or down and this often uh, corresponds to current airspeed. What Autotrain does is that it will sort of uh, accumulate this uh, tendency and it will gradually apply a opposite control to, to counter it. Now, uh, here's an option to, uh, to Autotrain pause when uh, when the manual control is applied, this uh, prevents it from like fighting against your inputs. It's always a good idea to have it on. Uh, threshold is uh, how much the control needs to be deflected before disengages. Uh, trim pitch to 1G is a special mode for F16. If you don't know what it does, just keep it off. And trim yaw to center will try to basically zero the yaw instead of uh, trying to keep the current yaw. Let's turn it on. This is better, it's better to turn it off if you have like something like A A10 that has to straight ground targets. But this is air to air fighter, so let's turn it on. Okay, and this is of course our sensitivity. Let's put 0 0.1 uh, for pitch, same for yaw. Roll can be left at uh, zero unless your aircraft uh, is in uh, some way asymmetric or it does carry an asymmetric missiles or something along those lines.
the amount of your centering can be left at zero and see if it works. Yep, as you can see, it when you do some maneuvering and level out, it will slowly begin to stabilize. And as you can see, the horizon now remains at the same position. So there's our auto trim. Now, another thing is auto throttle. Now, this is not the same as auto throttle as you know it from other flight simulators. I have made this to make it uh, easier to control aircraft with a with a gamepad. Uh, where you don't have throttle, but you only have forward and backward and it auto centers. Now, let me show you what this does. Let's add some sensitivity and same as with trim, you can set it that the manual input with, will pause the auto throttle. And we also have threshold healer. If you're if your gamepad doesn't uh, auto center perfectly, let's see what it does. Now, uh, watch closely our current IAS or our airspeed. If I let go of the stick of uh, that works as our throttle, the airplane will automatically adjust throttle to maintain current airspeed. If I get into sharp turn, uh, as you can see, the auto throttle increases the amount of power. And if I glide downwards, it will reduce the power. Okay, very simple. Next option is auto spoiler. Uh, this only works when the auto throttle is on. And uh, what this does is, if the throttle is at zero, but the aircraft is still speeding up, let's say in a dive, it will basically automatically deploy spoilers. And uh, auto throttle hover um, changes the algorithm, so it tries to maintain current altitude. Uh, this is, of course, for VTOL. Um, another option is auto flaps. Now, the jet that uh, I'm simulating in this example doesn't have flaps, so I can show it off, but it's basically uh, changing the amount of flaps depending on airspeed. Uh, okay, uh, below full retract speed, it's going to begin to extend and under full extent speed, they will be basically fully extended at, at uh, one, right, at full extension. Uh, and our final option is scale sensitivity with speed. And what this does is it, uh, it scales sensitivity of the assists with current airspeed. This is because um, most uh, jets are m more unstable or need more, more uh, control deflection at low speeds than at high speeds. So you can basically turn this on uh, and plug some sensitivity curves. So over certain airspeed, let's say the influence of of the assists will reduce. And in the next part, we'll take a look at our guidance system.